Hello on the Rockers. On this episode, we have singer-songwriter extraordinaire, pride hottie, memoir writing, kinky boots wearing, scissor sistering, Jake Shears. So raise a glass and let the drinks begin. <laughs> Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Like us on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air and on Facebook On The Rocks Radio Show. You can watch and or listen to our almost 300 episodes at ontherocksradioshow.com. Uh, watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV on the Outed.tv app. Facebook Watch, streaming with pride on SVTV and on Channel 31 on the East Coast. The show is brought to you by Fandaddies.com. Support your small businesses, as well as our vodka is powered by Neft Vodka. It's just damn good vodka. Ask for Neft at the bar or get your own for home. Okay, things might look a little different because uh, we're dealing with a time, time zone difference today. So I'm actually Zooming from home because uh, I'm so excited to chat with our guest from across the pond, Jake Shears served as the front man and one of the primary songwriters for multi-platinum selling glam pop band Scissor Sisters. He's born in Arizona, grew up in Seattle area before moving to NYC, where he studied fiction writing at the new school. He's written hits for Kylie Minogue, collaborated with Tyga, Andy Bell of Erasure, and Boys Noise. He's duetted with Cher. He also wrote the music for the stage musical version of Tales of the City. He made his Broadway debut as Charlie Bryce in Kinky Boots. And in 2018, he released his debut book, The Memoir, Boys keep swinging. And that same year, he released his debut solo album, Jake Shears, and continues to work on several projects, both in music and theater, including a musical based on the life of Tammy Faye Baker in collaboration with Mr. Sir Elton John that is set to debut in London in the next year. And this July, Jake will return to Kinky Boots for a limited engagement at the Hollywood Bowl. Please welcome my future ex-husband, Mr. Jake Shears. <laughs> What's up? Good evening. Good morning. Good morning, good evening. Who knows what time it is? I just know it's always a good time. Um, to say you've led a colorful life would be a huge understatement. So before we get into the nitty gritty, um, let's talk about Kinky Boots. Now you made your Broadway debut with Kinky Boots, but your actual kind of first big stage production was in Bent at the Mark Taper. Um, mm. That show is is quite dark and kind of a different side of Jake Shears than we had seen uh in such a heavy play all eyes were on you what was it like going through that acting and creative process in relation to everything you had done up to that point yeah that's awesome that's a great question i <clears throat> moises kaufman who is directing ben i mean ben is a very heavy play it's really dark it's a beautiful play uh but you know moises came to me and wanted to cast me in the show and it, it was not a huge part but it's a significant part in the first act and um i just didn't i'm not a good actor I'm like not an actor at all. Like I'm a bad actor. Like I was, and I basically was like, "Look, I'm really not good." Like, and he said, "I was like, should I start going to acting lessons? What do I do?" And he was like, "Don't worry, I promise, I've got you on this. You're just gonna, I'm gonna help you through it." And he really, really did. And I learned so much. And it was, it was one of the most amazing times of my life that summer. I think we did like seventy shows, and. Um, you know, it's such a beautiful show. I met amazing people on it. And really, it's just so exciting to see yourself kind of progress and learn new things. And, and I, I loved it. It was really funny. I mean, this, this show is so heavy. And, and every night I remember after the show, I put on, I'd set up my dressing room, like a full on, like full bar. There was like a big rug and, you know, fairy lights and stuff. There's, I'm sorry. Uh, and, um, and after after the show, every night, I mean, it was like so depressing. Everybody was like really down. And I would run up to my room and play Donna Summer, always, Love Will Always Find You. Every night I would play Love Will Always Find You. So everyone went back to the dressing rooms and kind of like got their good moods back on. But it was just, it was an amazing moment. And uh, and look, I, I wouldn't have been able to do Kinky Boots without it. Like, 
you know, Kinky Boots was bit, was biting off even more than I could chew. You know what I mean? There was another there was another moment where I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but uh, I'm sorry, there's my phone is going off. I apologize. Um, but I did, I did, and I really worked. I, I worked very hard on um, on on getting into that show and being able to do that show, and. It was that was just one of the best moments in my life, Kiki Boots. I'm so excited to get to get back in it. Well, and what I love about it is, as an artist, you know, some of some of the temptation is just to kind of stay where you are, where your fan base is. And what I love about your career is you've always, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Let's push through. Let's challenge. Um, and I think that's important for for any artist. And with Kinky Boots, as you were saying, it's a whole different energy. It was mixing in your uh, musicianship. Uh, you had written a musical at that point, you had acted, and now it had all come together. Um, but it's quite different doing that kind of performance, you know, eight performances a week, and then on Broadway for your debut. How did you, I mean, you're used to being on the road and performing, but it's it's very kind of strict to be in a Broadway show. How did you kind of have to modify your lifestyle to fit that kind of um, schedule? It was, it was, it was really like, uh, it, it, it was topsy turvy. Um, you know, doing eight show weeks, we would do five show weekends. You get to the end of the weekend and you, you know, I, I, I would finish the weekend and realize I'd been on stage for like a chunk of my waking life. Like you were like living on a stage, which is sort of my dream. Like I, I, I was really enjoying it. Uh, you know, that's just, it's sort of when you're, when you're in it, that's, that's kind of all you can do. And I, I took it so seriously just because I wanted to be good and just preparing for it and getting in there um, was just a lot of work. I don't know if I've ever worked so hard on anything before in my life. And uh, it was insanely gratifying. And you know, the I think the hardest thing about Kinky Boots was since it was such a special moment for me, and I, you know, I, I'm a lucky person with so many friends from from all over the world, you know, and, and everybody, you know, came in and it's like, I, I, and I wanted to see everybody. So on top of the shows, after every show, I was, I was taking people out afterwards for, for, for dinner and drinks or lunch and drinks. And, yeah. you know, I wasn't drinking that much, but, uh, but it was, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was completely ex exhausting, but uh, very satisfying. Now, I want to talk about returning to the musical uh, at the Hollywood Bowl with Wayne Brady and Kelly, Me uh, Kelly Marie Tran, by the way. Over the four years since you've done the musical, there's been COVID. I know you kind of had a breakout. How are you coming back to this character different? What new energy are you kind of bringing to this per performance? It's, it's funny. I've been thinking about that, actually. And, uh, you know, getting this, I'm get, getting off book again and going back to the script and it's sort of naturally coming back. I just feel so comfortable. It's really like putting on a, like a, an old leather jacket or something that you haven't worn for a while. And I feel very, I, and, and I hope this isn't, I don't know. I hope this isn't, I, I feel very confident with it. Um, I don't feel that stressed out about it. I'm really excited. I think, uh, there's something else kind of coming out in the character with me when I'm just working on it right now and the associate director and, and uh, it's, uh, it really does feel very comfortable and I'm, I'm just so excited to do it again with that confidence initially. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, now the year you debuted on Broadway was a very big year for you. Not only did you release your memoirs, you also released your debut solo album. Now your memoir, Boys Keep Swinging, what were you the most nervous for people to read about your life or to kind of experience through, it was all out there, turn the page, it's all there. Yeah, yeah, oh, God, it, there was quite a, quite a bit of stuff I was, I was nervous about. It's a little strange kind of like opening up certain things because uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of a private person, like on social media and stuff, I don't like, I, I, I don't like to spill everything out. I don't like for people to necessarily know where I met, am at all times or who I'm dating or what's going on. Mm. But, uh, but, you know, that book definitely like exposed myself uh, in a way. And I think, I think it was my mom I was most worried about. You know, it's just like, 
making something like that and being it's very sexually explicit there's a lot of yeah. drugs and sex and partying and like you know all kinds of stuff in there and i was like my god my mom is gonna read this and <laughs> you know and she did <laughs> she's like wow that but, was interesting <laughs> yeah and she's fine she's totally fine it was like it was it, it was not bad and um and I, but I, I, I loved writing that book and I, I look, I look at it now and I kind of wish I could write it again. Um, I'm working on my second book now. Oh, excellent. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a really cool experience doing it. I learned a lot. And I think that, uh, I don't know, there's something about, about writing about your life that's, uh, that's, that can be eye opening to yourself, especially, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't think there's like this theory that people shouldn't shouldn't write about anything that happens unless it happened like 15 years ago or before. So that's why I stopped my book in 2006 because I figured I needed to kind of like have some more time to, you know, the next book's going to be a little bit more about uh, what happened after. Well, that's, uh, I, I can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. Cause girl, you spill the tea. Um, and it's <laughs> funny, you were talking about going back to a role when you write your memoirs, you kind of have to relive all those moments, the successes, the highs, the lows, um, so how did that kind of play with your psyche as well? Because we've talked to other celebrities that have written their memoirs and for, for other people, it's been kind of uh, almost, almost like its own trauma because they had to kind of relive stuff that they've moved mm. past from. And sometimes it can really bring this kind of darkness back. How, how did you kind of a- a- avoid that? Well, yeah, though, it's just, I, I kind of be in denial a little bit. You write about these, you write about hard times sometimes and you I just sort of like shove it away and think, oh, it's fine. I'm just like, you know, and, and it really does, can, can, you are reliving stuff to a degree. Um, but I, you know, I, I was totally fine with it, but it's, it's interesting. It's like lately I've been thinking about like, I was, I think 24 when the first Scissors record came out, 25. And, you know, that's gonna, That's 18 years. That's, I mean, that first Scissors album is almost 20 years old. Um, and so it's, it's really interesting thinking back to that boy now um, mm. that I'm, I'm 43 and, you know, thinking about all the crazy stuff that I went through at a pretty young age. And, uh, you know, I, I think about it a lot now and, think, and, and try to kind of give myself a little leeway sometimes and think about you know, I think I can be really hard on myself sometimes. And, and, and I, I try to go back and think about those, those points and, and, and remember that like, I, you know, I did go through a lot. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes you've got to be a little bit easier on yourself. I don't know if that was the answer to your question. I just, yeah, no, like, no, 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 totally. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I, I this, this last week, I, I revisited your debut album, uh, solo album, Jake Shears. And you know, the majority of your music has this joyful party kind of euphoric, energy uh, which is a contrast to kind of the depression and anxiety that you've been very open about um and i'm yeah. so glad you are open about that because i think now we're finally able to talk about mental health and mental uh, uh health awareness in our community something that's been so shoved in the closet even more so than our sexuality so how does that uh, as a musician and maybe for our audience that's listening that uh, you know we've all gone through depression during covid and we're all going through through our own difficult points. How did you kind of work through that to create this joyful tone, I, I guess? Um, I mean, I, I, I think joyful music just kind of comes out of me. I love, I love writing really fun music. I love writing, um, I, I, I love writing stuff that's a little bit sinister too. That's also kind of, that has that like blend. Yeah. Um, I like stuff being theatrical. Um, this, you know, I'm just, I'm just wrapping up my second solo record. It's just about done. And it's sort of interesting. And like with, with this question that you're talking about, it was over, you know, over the last couple of years, it was, people ask me what the record's about. And it's not about anything other than the act of making it. Like it made me happy making the record. It was the one thing I could do that made me feel good. And that, that was fun. And so I just think that it's important to just at least find things that like anything that can bring you some joy. And like over the last few years, like that's what really just brought me a lot of joy was, was, was making music. And I think, you know, therapy is therapy is important. (laughs) If you, if whatever resources you can find, you know, people to talk to, I think it's, I'm a, I'm a firm, firm believer in, 
in therapy. It's helped me a lot and it still does. And I think during COVID, we saw a lot of um, artistic and creative uh, individuals working through their, their stuff, so to speak, uh, especially like digitally, there was different ways that we had to share our content and material. Um, and I think mm. it was an exciting time for a, a, a lot of artists. Um, so we're heading into Pride. You're doing Pride performances. You have talked about the infighting that happens in our community. And I wanted, I wanted your opinion, because I also have my own views of, of, about that as well. Yeah. Do you think uh, uh, our community, all of us having gone through COVID, having to survive the last presidential administration, uh, present day, continually fighting inequality, do you think our community has matured and come together? Or do you think uh, we still have a long way to go? I think, I think we're in a pretty good spot. I think... Uh, You know, we'll see this pride. I mean, I, I think I think it's going to be an exciting pride this year. I think, uh, I mean, I think the main thing is we all just need to really listen to one another, and we all need to keep a sense of humor. I think those are like those are those are two things: is just making sure we don't, as queer people, you know. I I I think humor is is part of. Uh, I don't know. I think it's part of who we are. And uh, I think we always need to keep that and we always need to listen to what each other have to say. I, I love that because there is this fine line, you know, of like jokes, but now I think we're trying to be so PC, even with an, our own group with labels. And we have all these new letters and labels, which is great for people that never saw themselves represented. But at the same time, I think when we take out that sense of humor and we're so careful around each other, then we lose the communication. Like, like we're talking now, being very open uh, about our uh, opinions. And girl, nobody's funnier than a gay man after two cocktails. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Um, yeah, I just think we've got to be, you know, I, I, I think we've got to be careful about, about, uh, you know, life is a gray area. Things are not always in black and white. And I think yeah. that like, things are not always like strict rules. It's just not what being human is. And, um, you know, I think everybody's got to be flexible a little bit and everyone's got to be able to, you know, there's no world with where there is no compromise, you know? <laughs> Um, so I think compromise, being flexible, having a sense of humor, listening to one another, all those things, loving one another are, are the most important thing. And that's what I want to see and continue seeing um, in our community. Uh, okay, girl, let's talk about sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I told all my sure. friends, oh, Great. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be chat uh, chatting with Jake and like, oh, my God. Uh, inappropriate comment, left and right, left and right. I'm like, everybody calm down. Um, <laughs> you have been very open about sex, nudity. Um, you even worked as, as a as a go-go boy uh, and, a, and a kind of dancer in your youth. There continues to be this stigma about sex positivity in mainstream. And even like our own gays are putting down other gays who are doing like OnlyFans or who are porn stars. Why do you think that there continues to be this fight against blatant sexuality in our community? uh yeah <laughs> i think well i think that there's there's like a lean towards like uh you know the the more accepted that we are the more we kind of can sort of like lean to this sort of like heteronormative outlook on um you know who who we are it's sort of it's it's easy to kind of like you know you could see parts of our community kind of assimilating into the mainstream and kids growing up like not you know looking at, at, at older queers or, you know, older people in the community being like, that's not, that's not who I need to be. That's not me. Um, that's not how I feel. Mm. Uh, so it's, you know, I think it's complicated. It's like a really complicated thing. Um, I do think it's very important to stay sex positive. And uh, I, I think, you know, people need to do what they feel. And, and uh, I don't want to come up with a better, with a sexier answer to this question now. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, listen, that's, I love OnlyFans. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've I've got some great subscriptions uh, to OnlyFans. Uh, there's a few accounts that I'm a big fan of. Uh, now, have, but, have you ever slid into yeah. their DMs? Uh, Spill the tea. <laughs> <laughs> Just not in, uh, not in, uh, 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 not really, no. 
So I'm, really, I just, I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad. At, I'm, I'm really bad at, um, at, at, at that sort of thing. I don't really, I'm not good at Grindr. I'm not really good at dating apps. Uh, you know, I met a really cute guy on Hinge here in London uh, a couple weeks ago, though, which is, you know, good. It was a big, yeah. big step forward for me. Gosh. But uh, no, I'm not great with DMs and stuff. I'm just kind of, I'm very awkward. I'm much better in person. Um, I'm not great at texting. Um, it's, it's just not my, my forte. So when you come back to the Hollywood Bowl, I guess we won't expect to see you on Grinder in the L.A. area? I probably not. And oh, you know, the thing about grinders, it just kind of makes me, I wish it made me feel better, but I just can't, I don't, I, I feel like I can't really, I, I can't really get laid on it. Um, and I don't know why. I think sometimes That's people gonna be think the like, headline. I, Jake Shears can't get laid. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that, that really is a headline. But, uh, but no, I think sometimes people like, uh, like, cause I'll send, I'll, I'll send my picture around. I'm not like shy about it or anything and then like i i don't know if people think it's not real or yeah, I, I, I people have some that, that that's it. preconceived notions about me i don't know but like i it's it could be you know i can get a lot of radio silence out there <laughs> I, I, whatever. I guarantee you <laughs> no i guarantee you people think it, it's not you um now before non-binary and gender fluidity were popular themes uh like in today's with our youth in your own youth you were a bit of and this is one of your quotes a, a girly freak uh, with your own style, your kind of own mm. energy. Where did this kind of exploration start? Because you grew up in Arizona, then Washington State. How were you exposed to that kind of energy? And where did you get the confidence to say, you know, fuck it, I'm going to be who I am? I needed attention, is what I needed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and I, and I that's, 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 uh, that's something about just my personality. I'm a person that does me... I, I need attention and I feel like I have channeled that now into, into, into healthy, healthy channels uh, and I, in a positive ways. I think it can go kind of either way for people like me that, 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 that need a kind of attention um, at the time. Um, you know, I just felt, I felt different and I, 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 I felt like I needed to break out when I was, when I was a teenager and uh, you know, I was so inspired by like all the music I was listening to. Um, this is like kind of like right before Nirvana came out and it was like Susan the Banshees and, you know, Nine Inch Nails. And I was super into Bowie and, uh, you know, there was just like a, it was, it was an amazing time for music. And I was very inspired by, by styles that I was seeing. And uh, yeah, I wanted to be different. I wanted to look different. I wanted people to see me. I wanted to feel like, uh, like I was sticking out no, and no matter the cost. Yeah. Even if people were going to like yell at me from their cars or like, whatever, like I, I, it was, it was more important to me to feel, uh, to feel like I did inside on the outside, um, than, than it did whether I was going to be made fun of or not. Now, what's your take on straight celebrities kind of exploring that gender fluidity, like on the red carpet. Like we see, you know, Shawn Mendes is now wearing a nail polish. We have certain straight actors that are wearing, you know, dresses and things. Do you think that's attention getting or do you think this is where our gender fluidity should be going, that it's not regardless of your identification in terms of our queer community? I think it's just happening. I, I I really feel like it's it's a it's a moment. I don't know where it's going to go. I really feel like it's just it's the moment that we're in, and it's just like something that people are uh, exploring, and it's it's really fun and wonderful. I was I'm I'm living right now in um in East London, and I was uh, I was just like locking my bike up or something like down the street, and I saw this I saw this really like this this big guy right this like super tall broad-shouldered you know in in this gorgeous I mean I don't want to say I don't I don't know how they identified so I know so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's a guy but they they were just this amazing being in this in like like a blue checkered like housewife thing going on with like knee-high kind of like sky blue go-go boots it was the coolest look I it was amazing and I was I was just really that I was just so I was looking at them thinking that 
that person looks incredible. And this is like a great fashion moment. Whatever's going on, I don't know what's going yeah. on, but it's fantastic. And I'm like super down. It may, it like really brightened my day. I, I, I love that. Um, okay, we have to talk about Scissor Sisters. Um, it was a, you know, a, a decade of your life. Uh, with all the successes also came struggles uh, with the group and, and individually, which, which you've talked about. Are you able to listen back and enjoy the amazing work that you all did, um, even though it came at the cost of a lot of hard work and challenges? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it was totally, it was, it was tough. Um, there, there were struggles, yes, but like, God, I loved every minute of it. Like I, you know, I wouldn't trade any of it. Like it's, I'm, I, I love singing those songs. I love, I still feel it doesn't, even though I'm not with the band anymore, I just, I still feel, I don't know. It doesn't, things don't feel that different for me. I mean, I just feel like I'm still making the music I, I love making and, you know, and, and hopefully like I'm able to, I can still, I still perform and I can sing all the songs I've written over my career and the new songs that I do and, and I, yeah, I love what I do. I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet. I've never had to like get a real job. I've always been able to like, you know, I think about that. I'm like, I have been able to like make my living off of, yeah. off of my passion. And, and it doesn't feel like all the stuff I do, it just doesn't feel like work. It's, it's fun. Um, it, but it, even though there are hard times and even though you can really sacrifice a lot for it, it's, to me, it's worth it, and it's a life I would never, ever trade. Well, and being an artist, you know, the struggle is part of being an, an, an artist, and overcoming those challenges and being able to be creative out of that. I have to tell you, um, like, again, you know, I went back and, and uh, listened to Jake Shears over and over again. I was like, oh, it really does fill you with this positivity, and you do see your through line of all your songwriting from the beginning of, of your career. Um, so I, I, I cannot wait for you for your second uh, solo album. Oh, um, it's 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 uh, you're gonna you're gonna love it. it's it's by the way it's a complete three sixty. It's it's like totally it's um, it's very it's really fun. Um, so heading into Pride season, you know, now's a time that we honor the Trailblazers before us. And one aspect among many that I'm enchanted uh, with your life is your friendship with Elton John. From the outside, we see Elton the activist, we see Elton the trailblazer, we see him the iconic musician. You know him on a more personal level. What has he taught you about life in general? Not the biz, but about life. Oh my God. Uh, you know, he's somebody that's, that's, that's just a, uh, you know, he's one of the main figures in, in my life. And, you know, I, what's been so amazing the last couple of years is he discovered uh, iPads and FaceTime, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is amazing uh, because, you know, he'll, I, yeah, I talk to him almost every day, you know, yeah. he just like, while he's eating breakfast, he <laughs> wants to, wants to call and, and chat. Uh, I, what have I learned from him? Um, I think just like just exactly what we're talking about, just being 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 grateful that you get to do what you love, being kind to people, um, you know, being true to yourself, and also, I, you know, the I feel like he's somewhere. He's gotten to some place that I still feel like I haven't. I mean, he came to a point in his life where he looked around like, how am I going to make how am I really going to make the world a better place? Yeah. Like, what am I doing? So like, what am I going to leave on this planet? Like, how am I going to make this world a better place? I don't know if I'm, I'm, I haven't, I haven't hit that point yet. I still feel like, a, you know, I'm still too selfish and like caught up in my own shit. You know what I mean? And that's something that I, that I, that I look at and see in him that I, that I want, want, want to be as well. Um, I if that, well, is, that, I, is, that, is that a good is that, is that yeah no that's 100 percent. you know and i think uh his energy is an energy that i that i wish i saw more from our new generations coming through in our in our generations of instagram and selfies and how many likes did i get and how many views and, mm -hmm. and all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and it is it's like what can i also give back to the community um so thank you for for sharing that 
but he also yeah just really quick like he, the, the other thing that i've learned from him and and it's 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 been occurring to me recently and just i basically i've i've, I've not talked about this. this is the first time i've talked about this but i've moved to london um and you know i know some people i know i know some people over here but i'm like making new friends and stuff and uh and he's really taught me the he's taught me the importance of um other gay musicians just finding other queer and gay musicians uh and how important it is for us to be there for each other um and that's something he really uh you know is is important to him and it's become really important to me as well and that's another thing i've learned from him anyways sorry that's it <laughs> <laughs> um thank you thank you so much i cannot wait to see you at the hollywood bowl uh you're going to be returning to or you're going to be coming to the hollywood bowl july 8th to the 10th returning to your role in kinky boots uh what is your message to your fans uh especially this pride season oh god uh this pride season you know just not take our good times for granted, not take our community for granted, not, not, not take your friends for granted. Um, enjoy yourself and, you know, don't believe all the corporate bullshit either. Yeah. <laughs> it, like it triggers the fuck out of me. It yeah. triggered me. Like it, it triggered me when I was like, you know, 18 years old stuff would make me crazy. And now I'm, I'm like, I, I'm not going to start bitching, but it's just like, I don't know. When the CEO of Taco Bell starts talking about safe spaces, I'm like, this is not, this is not what it's about. Except, um, well, there's the other side to that, though, that people say, you know what, but if some kid on some farm in the middle of nowhere that is, doesn't have any friends or anybody like him in his community, he's hearing that message, his family's hearing that message on a bigger level. I'm just more cynical about it. <laughs> I'm more cynical about it. I'm I really about it. I don't feel it. like that. Yeah, no, I just, I, I, there, there's a, I really, like, I can be very cynical about a certain sort of corporate side that happens with pride every year. So anyways, I don't know, just keep your eyes peeled for it. Be, you know, that's, uh, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> but have a good pride is my <laughs> message. <laughs> I uh, can't wait for the new book. Can't wait for the, the new record. Uh, you can find everything at jakeshears.com. Also on Instagram, uh, Jake Shears. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I thank think you for having me. This has been yeah, super fun. I, I think it's 5 p.m. where you're at. So go out, ha have a pint on us. <laughs> I might. Uh, I might do that. All right. Nice, nice talking to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Uh, well, that's all, folks. It's always a grab, grab bag of fun here every weekend on The Rocks. Big thank you to our, our guests, uh, our engineer, Tony Sweet, our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Coming up, we are kicking off Pride with more musicians. Uh, we have dance diva icon Pepper Mache is coming with new music that she's going to debut on our show. Um, and that's going to happen right before Pride. So stay tuned, like, share, subscribe, so we can continue bringing you this fabulous programming for free. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy. More importantly, stay tipsy. <laughs> this has been another episode of On The Rocks. Tweet me and slide into my DMs on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay fabulous.